Okay. So I add this slide, which is uh, allows you to live blog me if you want or whatever. Although Michelle disapproves of doing too much stuff and not paying attention to what I'm saying, and I and I agree with that too. So um, so today we're going to use Galaxy in the workshop. So how many of you have ever used Galaxy? One, two, no, back rows doesn't count. Okay. So it's so some disclaimers. Uh, so I, I don't profit from any way, shape, or form from any brands, but I am on the Galaxy advisory board. So I sort of, if they do well, I scientifically do well. So that, I guess I have some, but I don't get any money from them or whatsoever. Uh, this is my email info, contact, Twitter account, the hashtag for this workshop, and use Galaxy. So if you want to follow Galaxy, so one sort of word of advice for those of you who want to invent a new software package. Don't use a word that is very common that means something else. Galaxy, if you Google Galaxy, it takes a lot of tweaking to find the actual Galaxy software because there's a lot of other Galaxies out there. And so, yes? Which one? Oh, great. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Yeah, great. Yeah, find a great package. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> anyway. So uh, use Galaxy is the hashtag for so that's a unique hashtag for uh, the Galaxy software and people tweet about it. So uh, what we're going to do today? So we're going to talk. So one of the really big forces behind Galaxy is is really sort of at the heart of the developers and and the, and the PIs in that group is about reproducible science. And the idea is that if you're going to make uh, uh, something you're going to report on something uh, a sequence assembly or what have you if you can report so that somebody else can reproduce it it's very very uh, it's very useful and there's actually we uh, some PIs in, at uh, YCR did uh, they were doing structural variation comparison so they downloaded all the structural variation packages there's a dozen of them or something like that half of them they couldn't find the other half that did find half of them didn't compile and so forth. So all of this, so you can you know reference a, a, a software package in, in your in your bibliography and so forth. But if actually if it doesn't work, it's not very useful because you, it was working when you used it. So Galaxy is one of the things at the core of Galaxy is to make science reproducible. So to allow people, if they describe a pipeline, a process, a workflow in Galaxy, and then they publish this workflow, then it should anybody should be able to reproduce it. Um, so there are different ways of, of using of installing Galaxy, and you, there's lots of different Galaxies out there. So I'll, I'll go over that. It's a very sort of intuitive user interface, but you need if you have never used it. There's a few things that are good to, to learn about, um, and uh, putting it and getting things out of Galaxy. We're going to do processing data in Galaxy, Galaxy, and, and next gen sequencing. So next gen sequencing is actually in the lifespan of Galaxy. That was sort of a it's almost an afterthought. It wasn't designed to deal with next gen, but that's what a lot of people are doing, and so they are now uh, fully embraced uh, the next gen things with a few quirks uh, in the process, and, and we'll go over some of these. This is just a plug for a software package on pipelines that's developed at the OICR. That's open source. That is not. We're not going to talk about this week, but if you're interested in pipeline workflows and things like that. I, I so I invite you to, to have a look at that. Galaxy, like the SQL I just talked to you about, is an open source project. So it's freely available. There's no fees. Uh, whether or not you're a company, you, you can have it, you can download it, and you can contribute to it. You can make the code better and so forth. It, this, and as in, you may know from what Michelle just mentioned, it's in the context of open access, open source, open data. These are all the things that we rely on. And if we didn't have these things, uh, it, you know, bioinformatics would sort of uh, crawl and break down and, and, and not succeed. And so it's really an important thing uh, to keep in mind. So there's a couple of papers we talked to. Uh, I think I referred one of them. But it, it was a couple, there's, lots, there's actually been quite a few papers on, on Galaxy. They're all open access papers. Um, so the first concept what I want to tell you about is that the fact that there are multiple flavors of Galaxy. And that creates some problems and opportunities. So there is uh, the home page for the project 
is not galaxy.org, because somebody else already has that. So it's galaxyproject.org. And so there, there, if you go to that page, you will see, and there's links to it from the wiki, uh, you'll see the, all the various flavors of Galaxy. So one of them, the main one, that is the, the public server that you can go to and do things right away today, is usegalaxy.org. And it's at uh, the University of Pennsylvania. And, oh, sorry, Penn State. I get all those guys mixed up. It's at Penn State. And it's, um, you, it has two or three uh, CPUs behind, two or three hundred, uh, two or three hundred CPUs behind it. It has a few terabytes of storage. So I think there's a 10, 20, 30 gig limit per user, but they're, they're sort of basically uh, saturating. So it's a public server. You don't even have to log in to use it. You can just go in there and use it. The advantage of logging in is that it will remember you from the last time you were there, and so your files that you uploaded, uploaded then you can go see them again and so forth. So it's a, it's, that's a good, good thing. A second one, a second way of, of getting or using Galaxy is to actually get the source code and install it locally. So, so there, that's getgalaxy.org. So that's the source code for installing it. And I would advise any institution, sort of any university, to have a local instance of Galaxy and so and to serve its, its own users. At OICR, we actually have two instances. One that's sort of, uh, sort of on a single CPU machine. It's not, not a big workhorse, but if you just want to look up things and, and do simple manipulation, that's quite good. Then we have another one behind that's got behind the cluster, so that you can talk, you can launch jobs, multiple jobs in the cluster. So we have in our organization, which is a relatively small one, we have a Galaxy. Most universities don't have it, but they sh and but uh, you'll see a lot of them do, and and a lot of them actually make it publicly available. The cloud, there's a cloud version. So on Amazon, you can have uh, there's a version of Galaxy you can use, and which is what we're going to use this afternoon. And that one is useful because you can get more CPU if you need. You can get more larger clusters. And if you've got large uh, next-gen sequence uh, prop projects to do, then you can uh, do, you know, you can use it there. But it costs. So we talked, uh, um, Michael talked about it on the first day. Uh, I sort of compared this giving crack to, co uh, crack to babies. So this week we're giving you crack. You're gonna go home. So wow, that was good. And and then you're gonna go home, and then you have to go pay for it. So just I, I hope that coming down isn't too hard. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's reality of life. It, it costs. Um, the other sort of on the positive side, uh, there is a link here to all the public uh, Galaxy servers, and these are people that have installed Galaxy on their on their institution. And there's, they have their own package, and they make it open to the world. And they have, some of them have quotas on, on how many files you can upload. And some of them will be spe specific for metabolomics. Some of them will be proteomics. Some of them will be RNA-seq. Some of them will be uh, microbiome. And also, so there you should go look at that page and see if there's one that's already got the toolkit, of basically, that you need for the things that you need to do. And, um, and that, that's, that's very nice. So this is the Use Galaxy homepage. So you can go goes over all the things, and what it has also is a number of screencasts. So these are like short little videos of screen captures, same way that we're doing our our, our screen capture here for the workshop of tutorials using Galaxy and where to go click and, and push and, and what to do such and such. The problem with uh, Galaxy is that it can do lots and lots of different things and uh, we're going to talk about one very small slice and we're only going to touch upon something today and I really uh, if you if you want to use Galaxy to go look at the uh, uh, the screencast see the one that's there for, to do the things that you want to do and and to find the server or, or and there's always the use galaxy.org is always available and uh, will will be available for a while to come. There's also lots of user groups. So there's one for developers, but there's also ones for users, mailing lists, and, and part, very active. They have uh, a couple people. The Galaxy team has a couple people dedicated to helping their users, and so they they are very uh, very active and very responsive to the user community. And there's lots and lots and lots. 
they have, if you go to this page here, which is basically a Google search engine with only for their stuff. There you can search Galaxy and you'll get the right Galaxy. And, uh, but you can search for screencast on pipelines for RNA-seq or you can search for, uh, you know, workflows to do uh, metagenomic analysis and so forth. And so you will find lots and lots of information there. So this is what the, if you log into usegalaxy.org, that's the one at uh, Penn State, and this is what it looks like. We'll come back to this later. And these are all different screencasts. So if you go click on them, you can sort of scroll all these things around, and then you'll have short videos on, on what to do. And so all Galaxy pages, servers are all the same. They basically have the tools on the right. They have the, your history, on, sorry, the tools on the left, your history, yes. Left, right, this is right. Yes. Uh, on the right is the history, so all the steps of where you are at and, and things you've done. And in the middle is basically your output, your working space, what things look, which files you generated, what graphs you, you looked at and so forth. And that's, that's sort of the work area where you enter things. And so, and this is the home page for to get Galaxy, the software. So there's lots of, like I mentioned, lots of software development uh, activities. And uh, this is a page, it's a whole page on how to use it on the cloud. But fortunately for you, you just have to listen to me today and you don't have to read all this. And uh, this is the public Galaxy server. So it's just an example of some of the, the Galaxy servers. And some of them will say uh, that there are quotas. So this one says, if you're uh, registered, it's 110 gigs. If you're not registered, it's 10 megs. So advantage for getting registered. <laughs> so, uh, so Galaxy is, really integrates all sorts of different data types into one space. Uh, it allows you to do uh, many tools that you don't need to install and maintain. So if you have, if they're part of your Galaxy instance, you don't have to uh, maintain them. If you're maintaining Galaxy yourself on your own site, then there is some maintenance because if you want to have a new version of a tool or if you want to add a tool that you don't currently have, then you have, there's a bit of work involved with that. But that's also very well documented. Um, also, you build workflows in, in Galaxy and then you can share them. You can share them with your colleagues. You can share them. You can make them public and, and so forth. Or you can share them with just you know, your best friend. And so there are lots, of, it's a very useful way of, of, of sharing with your, your, your collaborators, for example, how you did a certain type of analysis. And you can reuse them, share them, and so forth, edit them. You can publish them. And, uh, and like I said, they're fully entered into the uh, next gen space. Yeah. Like, there are like smartphones these days. Yes. You can sort of say, update all my apps. Yes. They don't have that. They're definitely. So I'll talk a little bit about the way around that right now has been basically using a tool shed. And a tool shed is a, a little bit akin to an app store in the sense that you can go to the tool shed and you can see, oh, I want this tool, that tool, that tool, and install it onto uh, the admin of the, of the Galaxy can install it and, and put it. So it's sort of not too painful uh, way of doing it. It doesn't, uh, there's a lot of, of uh, engineering and so forth involved, and so the, the sort of update automatically part that is not quite working. I think mean, it's on their to-do list probably, but there are many, many other things in front of that item on their to-do list. Yeah. So again, reproducibility is a really uh, a good thing, and so keeping the history of which steps you did is, is what, you know, Galaxy is really good about. And not only which steps, but which parameters of which steps, and so if you use tool X, I use this parameter, that parameter, this file, and so forth. And the output file is named this, and here are some comments and some notes and so forth. Um, and you can obviously share a lot also. With that in mind, is it kind of legacy copies of the tools so that you use the same version every time you go back to a workflow? Yes, so, so that's, that's a good question. So the idea is that um, it's, yeah, so you would, would you, there are both, servers that have bow tie one and two, for example. And so there, so you can have multiple, you can have multiple versions of the same tool. You just have to explain to your user community that's using that, that page or that, 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 that version of Galaxy, what the, all the, the various versions uh, 
So people have never used bow tie, and they say, well, I'll take number two because I guess it's got a bigger number, you know. <laughs> and uh, they don't necessarily know what, what they get or, or lose by using one version or the other. But there's actually a place in Galaxy for documentation also. So there you can explain why, why uh, certain tools, what certain tools do. And we'll look at that. Um, and it's really, um, so Galaxy was really meant for biologists. It's not, there's a lot of software developers that develop for it, but the user community is not uh, the experts like all of you are, really, and have become with the command line. And so it's for people to be able to go use tools at the, at the web interface, with a user interface, uh, a, a web user interface. And so there will be, there are things that I find a little painful in Galaxy, which if I had a command line in the file, I could do like, you know, cutting a, a column and sorting it and so forth. These are all ways you have to go. You can do that in Galaxy by pointing and clicking, but if you know how to do it at the Unix command line, like all of you do now, uh, it's a lot faster. And so, but that said, there's a lot of biologists out there that uh, really enjoy uh, the, the Galaxy user interface. But can you do uh, an entire uh, RNSC analysis into uh, Galaxy? Okay. Yeah, well, I'll talk. This is not the RNA-seq workshop, but uh, I actually have an RNA-seq ex example at the end. Yes, yes, yes. So I actually just got recruited, quote unquote recruited, to go give a Galaxy workshop at an RNA-seq workshop in the fall in Europe. So that, uh, so it's a five-day RNA-seq workshop, and we're doing like half a day on Galaxy. And so, um, so yes, it can be done. And so, um, so funding for Galaxy should be pointed out. Most of the big funder now is NIH. Uh, it's developed at two universities, so Emory University and Penn State. And there's a wiki page as well. And there's a uh, uh, lots of, of user information on the wiki. The wiki is uh, greatly improved in, in the last couple of years. So. The problem, one problem with having all these various versions of Galaxy is that um, it's quite easy to sort of go to a Galaxy to, the main one has the most things, so the, the one that used Galaxy.org. But that one's limited a little bit because if you get a lot of people on there and there's only so much CPU and, and so forth, and it's actually getting close to, to being fully, fully saturated because it is really popular. But then if you go to another one, then you get different tools because each one is different. And so, and updating the tools is, is relatively simple, but it's not that easy. And one of the things, for example, the one on the cloud is not as up to date as the one at usegalaxy.org. So we're going to use the one on the cloud because it's the best one. If we've done this work, actually, it was last year or two years ago. The Amazon wasn't working, and we, we got stuck, and we ended up going to the we went to the uh, to the usegalaxy.org version, and uh, it worked. It was a little slow, but uh, it, it did work. But thirty people at once, or forty people at once, sort of jumping in to the UPen version would uh, slow things down for them a little bit, and so so that's a challenge. And so one solution that they're working on right now, and they're really sort of supporting is to do um, the tool shed. And the tool shed means that what they're shipping now is basically an empty box. And then you go to the tool shed and you get the tools that you need to do the kinds of analysis you want. And so uh, if you're interested in phylogenetics, there, there's like three tools there. If you're interested in uh, performing uh, protein, DNA, and RNA analysis, there's 118 tools. So you can get to those pages and then install uh, on your version of, of, uh, of this. So for example, these are all the, the SAM categories. And so all the various SAM, uh, so bed tools here, uh, uh, this Aaron guy that we hear about, uh, and so forth. So there's, that's their, their, their SAM sort of uh, page on the tool shed. So if you want to get those tools, then this is where you come in and get it. So, oops, oh yeah. So a general workflow for Galaxy is you log in. So it's really important to log in, and I'll explain that later again. 
you get data or you upload data, you manipulate your data, you can do this over and over again, then you save your output to, to a file, then you save this into a workflow, and you can publish this if you want, or you can share it with your colleagues, or you can save it for yourself to, to have. So all these things are the way things work in, in, in Galaxy. So what we're going to do uh, today is go use a, the Galaxy version. So to use galaxy.org slash cloud, and then you have this information there. And what we're going to do is we're going to start that right now. So the idea is that it's 2 o'clock right now, so we've been at it only 30 minutes. I hope that in the next hour we can get everybody logged in. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's... Uh, Goodbye, Michael. It's, it's great seeing you again. Yeah, catch up flight. But it was it was a pleasure meeting all yes. of you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank Bye. You. Take Thank care. You so much. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Take care. So if you go so if you have your wiki page up, if you have a uh, an uh, a new a browser in which you can sort of click so you have on the wiki, you have this same URL here, the second so this is a day five. Uh, Sorry, day two, lab five, or module five. And so this cwnextgen.signin.com console. So you click on that. And there's another file here, Amazon Credential. Okay, so I mentioned this at the beginning. I'm going to mention it again. The way we're doing this, I have a file here which has everybody's name, everybody's passwords, and everything. Don't do this at home, right? <laughs> so keep your password as if it was, because all of these are attached to our credit, to my credit card number, actually. <laughs> I kid you not. Uh, so uh, this is why we're going to shut it down at the end of the workshop. <laughs> and so, but this is where also, the, it's the same account that receives a grant from Amazon. So, so we're, we're okay. So don't worry too much. Anyway, so, uh, so if you have the uh, Amazon console, it should look like this. Your username and password is the one that's on this file, the Excel file. So if you have to open both, so you have to open your this browser with Amazon, and then this, and you look for your name, and uh, you'll have your login name will be this third column here, and your password will be this last column here. Everybody's doing this now. And if you click and it works, you should get this page. Does everybody have this page? Don't go any further yet. Don't reach forward and we'll all do it together. Yeah. So the, so Amazon is not the only cloud provider out there, but I would say it's the best one in the sense that it's the best one that has the the best tools, the best services, basically, and it's really uh, why we we like to use it. Yes. Yes. So, so actually, that's a very good question, and, and and Canadians should be worried about that, and we should, be, and we're worried about the Patriot Act, and so forth, because these these things are in the U.S., so they 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 are under uh, U.S. governance. Uh, they Amazon, partly for that reason, but also for other ones, they also have sites in Ireland, Singapore, Australia, Hong Kong, and so all over the world. And not in Canada. Um, and so uh, I think, though, that Amazon is more secure than most university, is more secure than maybe even most, uh, a lot of companies. Uh, there is, a, there is, you can encrypt, you can ship, transfer encrypted data. You can have uh, uh, multiple sort of uh, fobs and, and IDs and so forth. So that multiple points of security to get access to your data and to your services and nobody else over there can have access to it unless they have the same credentials so it's quite secure that said uh, before we don't upload any human data at OICR to Amazon 
for sort of the things you're, you're thinking about, the concerns you're, you have. We would like to, and we'd like to change the policies that would allow us to do that, but currently we cannot. And so even a private cloud, so there are such things as private clouds, so the same type of infrastructure that can be accessed worldwide. Uh, we're working on a project right now to install lots of um, international cancer genome consortium data into a private cloud in, in Chicago. And uh, it's, it's not, it hasn't happened yet. We have to get the ethical review boards to approve it and so forth. So there's all sorts of challenges. Okay, so everybody has this page? Yeah. Okay, good. So click on EC2, and then you should get this page. It may have different numbers, but it should look like this. Okay, everybody there? No? Okay. EC2. It should be something like three running. should be three running. Okay, good. We're going to hit probably 50. Yeah, we only have 60 total. So if we, if we get above 50, there's only 40 students in the class. If we get above 50, somebody's clicked twice. <laughs> and there's a few uh, instructors, so there should be, a, we should be below 50. But yesterday we were at, we were at 50, yeah, so maybe I had two or three running. But right now I only have one running. Okay, are we all there? Okay. So click on launch instance. So we're going to launch an instance of Amazon that has, um, so it's called an Amazon web instance. Uh, um, and no, sorry. It's an AMI, uh, Amazon machine image, sorry, uh, which is an instance of, of what uh, we have. So we get this screen. Everybody's got this one? Okay. And then so you click continue. I forgot to put a circle there. And then you should get this page. Okay? Everybody there? Don't want to lose anybody. So community AMI, so Amazon machine image. So this part, it will be slow. It was slow when I was doing it by myself. And so, so there's several things you can do here. So one is, um, so to type Galaxy. Okay, all lowercase. And basically what it's going to do is going to look at all the images that it has that are at Amazon that are publicly available from the community, and it's going to look at the string galaxy. And then once you get that, it will show you the list of Amazon machine images that have this string galaxy in them. Please note that this is also how you would search for a CDW. Yeah, we're going to do that later. Let's, let's not confuse that right now. So, so it's not working? So what do you get? Okay, so are you in the community AMI? Yes. Uh, they're public images, so they should be... Okay, so... Uh, can, can I make a suggestion? I think maybe too many of us were trying to log in, because the first time I tried it said error, and now it's actually loading. So we'll see yes. what happens. Yeah. Yeah. There's a JSON error. That that's yeah. definitely yeah. So go back or go back to the screen, type Galaxy, and just hit enter once. So how many got this page? How many of you did get this page? So if you get to this page, and then what you have to do. You have to click on the instance type, okay? And as you can see, there are many different kinds of instances that come at many different prices. As you can imagine, the ones down here are more expensive than the ones up there. Um, Michael had a price chart on his slide. You can look at that. And the one we want is the extra large, it's sort of like super size me. So it's got eight processors, uh, sorry, four cores, and 15 gigs of, of memory, so we're going to take that one. So you select that one. M1. On M1, yes. It's an M1 extra large. And then now you're going to go over to the wiki, and on the wiki there's this information here. So you're going to copy and paste this, and you're going to stick that. Uh, oh, did I put that slide in the wrong place? No. 
Uh, yes, I did. Okay, keep this in mind for now. Galaxy. So the Galaxy is the. Oh no, I think I forgot. I forgot to. Uh, I forgot an image. Did we press continue? Did we press continue or not yet? Yes. So once, you, have you copy and pasted this? No. Okay. So go on the wiki. It's on the wiki on uh, module five. So co copy and paste these three lines. Where? Just to to just copy. Oh. You know to <laughs> to your to the clipboard. To the clipboard. Thank you. The word I was looking for. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Copy them to the clipboard. Okay. Okay. And I'm missing an image here, but there's an image. It's, it's, huh? It's, a, it's the one before this, right? Yeah, 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 but I want to get to the right screen. I don't have the right screen. I'm missing. So there's the one after this. I think there's the one where you copy and paste this, right? There's a box. Yes, okay. So you, okay, so user, user data box, yeah. You copy this, and then you change. You put your initials underscore your number, okay? And this is important so that Zybin in the back and he sees two of these, he'll shoot, he'll kill one. <laughs> <laughs> so if your initials, is it one initial underscore another or, or both together? It doesn't matter. It's a string. It's a string oh. that's going to be unique to you in the lab, in this class. Is okay? it your CBW number? Yes. Or your number that you've been using? Your CBW number that you've been using so far, okay. yes. I'm sorry, I just, I'm so scared of getting kicked out of the system. And yeah, yeah. The, so, but. <laughs> I just had the previous screen, yes. and we have yeah, to put in the extra large, and yes. then. Please continue. Oh, okay, so we don't select preference. We no, just no, yeah, everything else oh, is the Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so yeah, I was sorry. like, oh, did I miss something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. here, copy and paste. Okay, so the important thing about the copy and paste into the user box, and I forgot, i sorry, I forgot there. There's a few, there might be a few leading spaces here. Make sure you delete them so that this is line, you know, space one in that box. You don't want any leading spaces here. And uh, space here is okay, but then this is exactly as it is, of course. So we're going to be in that data? Yes. But make sure you, there's no, you, and actually make sure there's no space at the end here also. So just put your, your cursor there and just tap. don't delete any characters, obviously, but delete any spaces at the beginning and at the end of the line. By, by number, you meant our like, small student number we've been using? Yes, indeed. And then after you copy this, then you hit uh, continue, and then you should get to this page. I think, I hope. And then by default, it will be, I think it's quick start, it's selected. so you select Galaxy. And what that does is basically, it, it has a lot of parameters on keeping the web portal open. To, and so it, it's all sort of security related issues. And so we're just gonna take who can talk to who and so forth. And so we just take the Galaxy. Galaxy has already figured this out for us. So we just select Galaxy and then move forward. And then you get to this page. So you just do continue. And this is the important one. So this is a summary. If you don't have, if it says micro or something else in M1 large, that means you picked the wrong instance. So go back and fix that. Fix so. Extra large. Extra large. Yes, that's an old slide. Very good. Good catch. Everybody's following me. Very good. Extra large. <laughs> and so, and then you hit launch. And if you hit launch, you should get to a screen. You will not. It's not this screen either. But it's a screen that will have uh, the third. The third item is what on that page? Yeah. You select and copy, and then you go to another tab on your browser. And you should get something that looks like this. The public DNS, yes. Or it's, it's, it's there, it's at the bottom. Or if you just click right below the table, there's a list of... Uh, there's this 
uh, EC2 instance right below the list of the table here. There should be, there should be the URL right there. But if you scroll down, it's down there as well next to the public DNS. Yeah. That's the same number. So you need to have this running to have that happen. So this has to be green. Basically, the instance has to be alive. And it may take a few minutes for that number to be registered with the DNS at Amazon so that the rest of the world can see that number. But if it doesn't work, just wait and then do it again. And then highlight, copy, and paste into a fresh tab onto your browser. You want to keep this one up as well. You want this tab up, and you want the other one that looks like this. Looks like we're there, but we're not quite there yet. And you get this screen. We're going to give ourselves 10 gigabytes uh, of space. Enter 10 over here. Okay, 10. Then you hit 10, and then you choose Cloudman. And then here, 10, yeah. So when you get here, this should be gray, this should be yellow and gray. So you should have one green box that's sort of churning about, that's starting to rev up the engine. So we're only going to use one core. But if we were ambitious, we could sort of launch up to 20. But we'd be spending 20 times as much. And we're not going to do that. Uh, but that's just so you know that if you want to launch more cores and you want to do larger projects, this is where you would do it from. And then after a while, these two things have become green. And then this button, which was grayed out, is going to become dark. Once this is gray as dark, you can click on it. And then once you click on it, you should see this. And now we're there. <laughs> and now, after that, we go on coffee break. <laughs> actually, I, uh, I lie. There's actually a few other slides that... Uh, but actually, you don't have to do anything. You just have to listen to me. So what we've done... So Michelle sort of alluded to it. So what we've done is we actually made these the MI for the workshop. We're making it publicly available on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon and you want the workshop that you've been working on, the command line space that you've been in the console you've been working on, which has all these tools pre-installed on it, you can go find it. So you have the name of the AMI. It's a public AMI, so it's, anybody in the world can use it. And it's got that number on it. And it has, it's a CBW. So you can search for CBW and you'll find it. It has all of these tools installed. So that's available for you if you need it. So we're paying the so we're paying to keep that online. If you go use it, it'll be your dime. Just so you know. We're not gonna we it's not free for you to use. It's gonna be at the, it's gonna be an Amazon instance. But um, it's relatively cheap. So for that, you have to sign up for your own AWS account. And you have to go, same thing, EC2, launch instance, go classic wizard. Then here, you use CBW as a search term. Then you go find the one which is just talking about. And then uh, same thing as we did in the, in the class. So the th thing that Amazon has, it actually has the 1,000 genome data. It has GenBank, it has reference to human HG19, HG18, things like that. It has Ensemble data. It has um, Unigene data. So it has a few data sets from NCBI, a few data sets from EBI that are already there, so you don't have to upload them and so forth. And then, yeah, so this, this URL here at the bottom has all the public data sets that are available. So you can go look at that and see what's there. And it tells you how to where they are exactly and so forth. So we're actually in the lab after coffee break. We're actually going to use one very similar to what uh, Michael was using from the, the 1000 genome set. 
we're going to use a, a file from there as well. And now that's it. So, so if you get to this page, you've been successful. And you're allowed to go for coffee break. So, um, so in the first part of the uh, the lecture, there's some I was missing some images and things like that. So I will update the, the the PowerPoint and put it back on the wiki, updated with the missing images, so that when you go you can go look at them and you download them and, and so you'll have the the full deck. I never stopped it, so it's been running throughout. <laughs> Leave well enough alone is my motto. So. Um, same slides, same intro. So at this point, you should all have this, okay? And what we're going to do now is I'm going to, we're not going to touch this. Now it's running, it's humming. It's not going to disappear, I hope. You know, it should. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through sort of some lecture on the mechanics and, and how files are, you can get things on into a, into a galaxy. I will do everything so you I don't want you guys to do it and then we're going to run it again and we're going to do a we're going to load um, a fast queue file we're going to do some QC on it we're going to do some mapping on it and we we'll talk about some limitations with the, this current image but you'll you'll get the, the gist of it and um, and that will be about how much time we have for the rest of the day there are, as I mentioned earlier on, there are lots and lots of things on Amazon. There's lots of ways of configuring things. There are a lot of public servers. There's the one at, at UPenn that use galaxy.org, but there are lots of other ones. And definitely, depending on which community you're in and so forth, have a look at those. And it's lots of documentation, lots of user help. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a well-funded group. The whole team at Galaxy is about 10, 12 people. There's two people whose full-time job is, is, is help desk, basically, is help the user community. The man, the uh, man and woman, it's a man and a woman, the, uh, the, the mailing lists, the uh, discussion groups, the, uh, and so forth. So they're, they're very active, very supportive uh, community. And of course, the community itself, like if whenever they can, they will help each other as well. So if you're interested in, in using uh, Galaxy, I, I encourage you to be part of those mailing lists and so forth. So, um, so we're going to do uh, things like I mentioned. So this part actually, I is a mistake. I will fix that in the and this. I wanted you to do something right now. The the thing is, you don't have. You can't do this right now because. Um, you don't have your instance anymore. I was going to have you copy a file to your, your space on, on, on your shell, and then from Amazon, we'd go pick it up from there. That's how you would do it normally. But what we're going to do later on in the lab is that we're going to copy it straight from Amazon to, to Galaxy. So we're not going to go through this middle step of you holding onto the file. I mean, you could copy the file to your home directory if you want. But what we're going to do is we're going to copy it straight from Amazon, where it lives right now, to, to Galaxy itself. So some of the things that you do in Galaxy, and we're not going to do now, but once we start in the lab, we'll do that, is to log in. And the, reason, the main reason for logging in so is that it remembers who you are, and then that way you can share files, you can uh, make them publicly available to other users, and so forth. And so that's once, if you've never logged in, then this is true for the cloud version, the, uh, the, the use Galaxy version, any instance of Galaxy, you always have... Uh, this, uh, whoops, shoot, sorry. You will always have, uh, there we go, uh, this prompt here on the right hand side log in and register. So if you've never logged in before, you register. And once you've registered and logged in, this is what it looks like. You have all sorts of other options. And so that's, uh, um, so as I mentioned, on the left panel, and this is true for every Galaxy instance, there's the tools on the left-hand side. There's the, uh, the history, in the, and in the middle is your working part. So here I looked, what I did is I looked at some of the tools that were available on, this is the tools, give you a, uh, just a, an idea of the flavor, of what's available in the cloud instance right now. 
So you have all these, and these are the header of sections that have more tools below them. So for example, um, <coughs> operator and genomic intervals, so you can reverse complement, you can all, you know, copy, delete, get parts and so forth. All sorts of tricks are in that section. Um, extract features, so get all the, the coding sequence out of a piece of DNA. Uh, filter and sort, so you want to filter for chromosome 22 and you want to get rid of everything else and so forth. Liftover, so when the, the genome changes version, you, can, you want to do a liftover from one version to another. And so all of these things are in there. So I did uh, at the top level, so at the, at the below level it would probably be bigger, but if I at the top level, I did a diff, this is a Unix command trick, of the files, of the, of the headers that are available on the Galaxy Cloud versus the used Galaxy Cloud. So the used Galaxy Cloud has a lot more tools, and even the GATK actually has, has more GATK tools. The, uh, what's available in the Galaxy Cloud is actually quite uh, limiting. Um, there's uh, bed tool, SNP, uh, SNPF, and so forth. All the, some of the things you, you, we've uh, uh, talked about. This is what's different. This is all the, everything else is, is shared by, the, by both of them. And that was in the previous slide. Uh, and this is like get data. If you click on get data, then this expands. This is just a part of get data. Uh, so you can get data from uh, lots of different places that offer data. So the main one that's the most commonly used is the first one where you just upload your own file. But a very, very common one would be to go to the USC Genome Browser, which has lots of data in table format. So you can get a uh, GFF file formatted, a uh, list of all the genes and all the features and all where their coordinates are in chromosomes and things like that. You can get that from, from UCSC. And we'll do a bit of that later. But there's a bunch of other uh, servers where you can get data for. So all these places basically talk to Galaxy, whether it's on the cloud or at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, so all of them also uh, at, at the top of the, of the tool is this search uh, bar. And that's actually, the list is so long, that's usually what I do. Is I just type a very, and it's a string matching thing. So you, t so you can type SAM and you'll get sample, and you get SAM tools and so forth. So you can just type a short string that you know like mapper or map and then you'll get all the mapper type information. So that's a really the fast way of going through this long list and without having to go click open up sections to see is it in there and no, it's not in there. Oh yeah, I remember where it was and so forth. What I do is just type the, the, the name. And so if you type Sam, then you get all these things. But if you type Sam on the cloud version versus Sam on the um, usegalaxy.org, you see it's quite a bit of difference. And so there's a different tool sets that are present at different sites. So this is just something to keep in mind. But we're going to do SAM to BAM, for example, which is a SAM tool. Uh, and we're going to do, uh, I think that's the only SAM one. We're going to do some other things. But uh, So I'm also going to talk a little bit about the UCSC genome browser. Who is, who's used the UCSC genome browser here? Yeah, a lot of people. Good. So it's a, if you work on eukaryotic genomes that have been sequenced, uh, it's, it's probably on this, on this site. Uh, it, they do a lot of uh, sort of uh, evolutionary comparison at the high level, so they'll compare, you know, f fugu against chicken, against uh, zebrafish, against um, all the vertebrates that have been sequenced and so forth. Uh, they'll be... There's lots of information. There are a lot of tracks at UCSC, and it's a uh, uh, it has both the graphical and table view. And this table view of the data is what Galaxy uses, and so it actually knows to go get that kind of information and then incorporates it. And uh, you can also in Galaxy, sorry, in UCSC Genome Browser, you can actually load your own track and show them to, to so you, you can see them or compare them to, to what your colleagues can see them, make them public or make them share a URL where they exist and so forth. And it's a client-server sort of architecture. 
And so, like, uh, so this is UCSC uh, genome homepage. And basically, if you hit genome browser at the top, is where, but there's lots of information about various um, uh, data sets and so forth. A problem, I think, in general, with uh, with all genome browsers, be it Savant or, or, is that we're dealing with very complex data and it's sort of linear, you know, one uh, sequence dimension. And so there are different tricks and different groups of views to, to, to show that information. But it, I mean, um, UCSC is probably, in a way, the worst, worst culprit in being stuck in this sort of linear mode and just adding tracks, and it just becomes a little overwhelming, I'd say. And um, that's, that's their data model. That's the way they operate. But it's just uh, um, things like Savant and things like um, even Cytoscape or take, like, you know, sort of bring things in a different dimension uh, is really uh, important. And, you know, how do you represent protein-protein interaction? How do you represent uh, clinical information? So IGV does a bit of that, too. So there are differently, there have been ways and groups that have tried to get out of that sort of sort of uh, restraining, restrainment that sort of the 2D does, but it's, it's definitely a challenge. So if you hit uh, the genome browser, this is what you get. And you can enter right away, uh, you can enter a gene name, a specific position, and so forth, and then you hit submit. And it, uh, for example, if I put in a uh, KRAS in, in this example, I get it's, it does string matching on KRAS and tells it shows me all the places in its database where KRAS has showed up, and so there'll be uh, RefSeq references, there'll be different uh, allelic or alternate splice variants of KRAS, and so forth. So uh, and you can sort of click on one of them, and uh, if I hit, I think I hit the first one, so it gives me the coordinate system, where it is on the chromosome, which chromosome it's on, uh, and all this, usually by default, it shows alternative uh, RNA splice variants, um, and then it also by default, it shows you similarity to other organisms, and so you'll see that um, there's very strong similarity to mouse, dog, and uh, I think it's Xenopus and so forth. So the Xenopus, there's one gene here that seems to be similar in Xenopus. So there, where obviously uh, conservation is, is present, uh, you'll be able to see, see it in that track. What it also has, is if you scroll down, it has basically every track that it actually holds. And so it has... Um, ways of representing compressed and so forth, expanded, and, and so you can customize and, and make, you just want to see alternative splice variants, and you can shut off all the other tracks. Other examples of data types that are available from UCSC, tab separated in general, fast A sequences, which are just a uh, greater than sign with a, an identifier and then a nucleotide or a protein sequence. Uh, there's bed format, there is a GFF format, which is usually often used for um, uh, gene features and, and uh, gene transfer format. So this is FASTA format, pretty straightforward. This is BED format, so it's chromosome, start, and uh, some description and, and some values. Uh, and it can sort of uh, annotate and, and do some various things. The GFF format will have the sequence name, the source, features, start, and score, strand and so forth. Uh, GTF, uh, sorry, GTF, yes, is like GFF, but it's more specific to exon encoding sequences and has uh, a couple of extra fields uh, uh, for gene names and transcript ID. Um, so, again, this part I'm going to do only on the screen, so you don't need to do this. It's very straightforward, it's just to show you the mechanics on how uh, Galaxy works, and then we'll do we'll do an example together. So I'm going to do an example, which is basically um, we could we could do it on 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 Galaxy at 
use Galaxy because it actually doesn't uh, cost too much from CPU and, and file size. But we're going to go get the 50 base pairs around SNPs, all the SNPs that are on the BRCA1 gene. That's when we want it. That's the operation we're going to do. We're going to do that in Galaxy. So I go to the use Galaxy. I'm going to go upload, go to UCSC main server and get a uh, table browser. I'm going to select variation and repeats, the track snip, the version of the track. I'm going to look up BRCA1. And I'm, I'm going to hit look up. And it's going to give me uh, all the various BRCA1s. I'm going to pick. Uh, so I get the, the position by doing a lookup. And then I have output into a bed format. And I'm going to send output to Galaxy. So by default, it knows it came in through Galaxy. So it knows it's going back to Galaxy afterwards when it generates data. Um, so here I'm on the, on the left-hand side. I'm in Galaxy. And then I'm, I'm going to give it a name if I, if I want. And I want the whole gene to the whole bracket one gene. So I'm just getting one gene. Then I click uh, Send Query to Galaxy. So it goes to Galaxy. So Galaxy is now thinking about it. So it's got a yellow box and it's a little thing turning away. And it turns green, so you've done well. It, it's figured it out. So I have the file name here. If I click on that, it expands and shows me a short snippet of what it is I retrieved. If I click on the eye, or the expression I like to use, if I poke it in the eye, it shows me into the middle panel, and it shows me the, what it retrieved. So it's got the chromosome number, start position, end position, the name of the uh, SNP, and uh, some uh, the strand is, is no strand information. Uh, sorry, a strand on the last column and a zero doesn't mean anything in this case. On this small window, you also have the information what the columns are. So it actually has the names of the columns and so forth. So you poke it in the eye, you can see that. You can also, if you hit the pencil on the right hand side, uh, right here. So that's poking it in the eye. I'm not going to do I did that before. Now, if I hit the pencil, I get this page in the middle. And that allows me to actually rename it into a sort of better name than whatever the machine guessed it was. So this is, I can give it whatever name I like. And I can also, uh, and I strongly encourage you to do that, I can also put annotation notes uh, and so forth, you know, so that you can remember later on when you look at it. And this is uh, the also important, very important, which build it was done on, HG19. As m some of you that were here for a previous lecture know that HG20 is coming out in a few months, like a month or two. And so all the coordinates, whatever it is you did on human chromosome 19, uh, version 8, 19 is, is not going to get shifted around a little bit. So uh, you save that, and then it, so it's got the new name on the right, and um, and so we're going to do that. And now we're going to uh, also while we're at it, we're going to rename the history. We can uh, sort of um, delete things if we want, and they're gone. But then we can share and publish and so forth. That's all available from from that panel on the right. So now we're going to operate on genomic intervals, and we're going to get the flanking sequence. So the SNP is a single nucleotide position, and we want to get 50 nucleotides off of that. So we're going to go hit this one, and then we get this panel showing up in the middle. And so that's the name of the file. So it knows which this one has got the right format, so it guesses that that's the right one. If you have more files in your directory, all the files that have the right format will, will be available there from a, from a radial box. And then all you need to do is execute. And um, and so one way to get the flank is to actually type flank, and then you get all the you know that's a quick way to looking through all the, the various tools, and you execute. And then again, so now we have uh, now instead of being one interval, one nucleotide interval, it goes for let's say 422 to 472. So you got 
50 nucleotides. So now we have two, uh, 50, we used to have one nucleotide coordinate, now we have 50 nucleotides because we told it to, to get 50 nucleotides. And so you can look at it, again, poke it in the eye, you see the thing on the bottom, so, and, and so forth. And we're going to work on this workflow. So the workflow, you can save, uh, extract a workflow from what you've done, and it basically was get flank, extract genomic intervals, and so forth. So what you can do now is you can save this workflow and say, okay, get me the flank for uh, a different gene. So uh, this was BRCA1, get it for BRCA2, get it for KRAS, get it for CLOCK, get it for whatever gene is available. And so you just run the workflow again. You don't have to go through and clicking all the, the various parts again. So we named the thing get flank. And so now we're going to get the KRAS SNPs. And uh, we just, it just runs all at once again. So now um, we're going to start using it, our instance. So go to your Galaxy instance. And don't type this in. Instead, on the lab wiki, there's a lab five uh, tab. You click on that, and it. Let me bring mine up. So module five, there's this module five lab. So there's things I told you to do here, and that's not what we need to do. But you go down, because you don't have this instance anymore, so you can't go there. But this URL here, not the wget part. So this command, if you run this command from your shell on, on, uh, on Amazon, or any, any uh, Unix uh, prompt that has the wget command, it will actually go over the web and get this file that you sort of told it. But now what we're going to do is just I want you to copy, so select, ah, no, cancel that. Don't click on it. Sorry, I'm going to have to sit down. Retrieve the file from Yeah, so you, you get, you, I want you to, actually one way to do it is you control click and you, uh, Copy link address. That's one way of doing it. So you do that, and then you go back to your Amazon. Uh, let's see. Okay. So here's something we can just so you know. So let me make this full screen. So on Amazon, if you click on this little bar here, that disappears. Click on this one. That disappears. So I want this one here on the left. So I'm going to click back on it. And now I'm going to uh, get data. And I'm going to upload a file. OK. Then here I'm going to paste Apple V. So I'm going to paste that URL that I just copied. Don't hit Enter yet, because there's something else you need to do. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. So the other thing you need to do is um, oh, it's not there. Oh yeah, because it's at the wrong place. Um, so for file format, I'm trying to see where I had that. Click. Oh yeah. So file format, you get to select FastQ Sanger. So this is an old, um, there's different FASTQ formats. I wish Michael was still here. He could explain some more. But basically, so this is not the URL. You type the URL I just told you, which is the S3 Amazon URL. That's what you, don't type this one, but the one that I told you. And uh, what we're doing is we're getting data and we're uploading a file. Yeah. 
fast Q C, yes. Not fast Q C, fast Q. Fast Q Sanger, yes. Not fast Q Sanger. It's fast Q C S Sanger. No, no, no. That's not correct. Oh, it's incorrect. Oh, I missed. Okay, yes. I typed it. Okay. Anyway, it's a pop up menu. Yeah. Yeah, fast Q Sanger. Yeah, you select from the Fast Q Sanger. What you what I wrote on the right, not what I wrote on the box. What I wrote myself, not what it says there. <laughs> I'll fix that later. Thanks for catching that, uh, Stephen. Okay. So this is going to take a bit of time, I think, and then you. Uh, so, and then you hit execute, and then, and then basically galaxy magic happens. At first, you'll get a gray box. It's really sort of going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, and then it's waiting, and then it's going to turn yellow, and this little thing is turning about, and it's actually doing its thing, and then when you're done, it's going to be green, beautiful <coughs> green, and then there's the evil red, which you don't want to see. <laughs> but that happens sometimes, too. Red is not good. Yeah, that's what this, yes. The thing about the red box. You don't want to see the red box. Anyway, so if you do that, so it won't say CBW, it'll say S3, Amazon, blah, blah, blah. So everybody have a yellow box right now? Yes. Green, you have a green box. Even better. Okay. We're doing good. <laughs> Who has a gray box? That's good. No gray boxes. Who has a red box? <laughs> No red boxes. Yellow. Who's yellow? yellow? And green? Green. Okay. So Galaxy is really keen about helping you keep track of things, adding tags, adding uh, hints to so you remember when you come and look at this in a month from now, what it is you did, and so forth. And so in spite, in, in addition to the actual which tool and which data and so forth. It, you can add names to your history, you can add names to your workflows and so forth. So all these things are possible. And so one thing you can do actually while you're waiting is you can hit, it says unnamed history, so you can click on it to rename the history. And so you can call it uh, whatever you like. I think, uh, did I have, yeah, no, I, I, I forgot to name it on some of the slides there. But basically you can name it, uh, uh, mapping uh, uh, chromosome 22 reads. So this this file that we're downloading is a million reads, 75 base pair reads from human chromosome 22, which is the smallest chromosome. And uh, huh? green. We like green. Green is a very calming color. <laughs> So if you click on the box once it's green, then you'll see some, uh, what looks like, because you know it well now, you, it'll look like uh, some uh, FASTQ files. So basically, and as the name uh, indicates, it's got that. So you can save the file. So this is an icon, it's a floppy disk. Some of you may not know what a floppy disk is. <laughs> but that's a, it used to be a device onto which we used to write files on. Anyway, that's used now as a Nikon for saving. <laughs> Although nobody uses disks anymore. <laughs> you can have more information, or you can rerun it also. And you can add tags and, and so forth. Um, so one thing you can do right now 
is that you can poke it in the eye. So if you poke it in the eye, once it's green, then you'll see the whole file. And it's usually in next-gen sequence data because it's, there's, the files are so large. This one is a million uh, reads. Uh, it only shows you the first, the top part. Okay. So from poking it in the eye, you see this. If you uh, use the pencil, then um, this edit window where you can add notes. And what I, something I do sometimes is I put in uh, annotation notes, I put the old name that was machine generated. I stick it here so I remember what it used to be called. And in this case, I called it exome underscore chromosome 22 dot fastq. But you can call it whatever you like. Having an extension that, that represents the file name is usually useful. Galaxy doesn't use that, but it, it, you as a user may find that very useful. I find it very useful. Anybody still in yellow? A few yellows, yeah? Okay. So you don't keep the first part of the name? It just it's up to, I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's all whatever is convenient. If you like the, the long name, keep the long name. But you're going to see Galaxy is going to make up names pretty soon. And so if it makes up names that reflects parts that are useful, it starts being very long strings because it just adds to the name space, basically. And then, uh, then when you finish with the name changing, you click Save. And now... I have, that was the history name, which actually we're not going to be able to do because of some other problem, but I'll, I'll tell you about that. But now that's a new file name that it has. And we're, uh, we're at 210 megs, or thereabouts. Okay, so who is still in yellow? One, two, three. Okay. Okay. You can look next to you. So the first thing we're going to do is going to do quality control to see how good this FASTQ file is. It's, uh, we got it from a Thousand Genome Project. It's probably in pretty good shape, but the one coming out of your lab may not be so nice. And so it's a good thing to do some QC, and we do that on all our files. Everything we do some QC uh, of the BAM files and of the FASTQ. So where do I find the FASTQC tool? I just type FASTQC or just uh, FAST or, or whatever, and then I get it matches that string. And so, and that's the one I want. I want to click on here, FASTQC, read QC, report using FASTQC. So I'll click on that. And um, I basically, by default, it already knows which my file name is. And I just hit execute. And then what I get, this one's pretty fast. It goes, I now have a second in my history panel. That was my first file, and now I have my second one, which is basically fastqc of that file name dot fastq dot html. So the fastqc program output is actually an HTML file. And then you click on that, you poke it in the eye, and then you see this, you scroll down, and you get this graph. And so you lost? Did I hear somebody say they were lost? Okay. You get this file, right? You have this. Then you go, you type fastqc in the tool query, and you look for this program here. It's under NGS QC and manipulation, fastqc file. You click on that, you get this, execute, and this box it turns gray, yellow, and green very fast. I don't think I have time to go catch the green part or the yellow part. And so it's, then you click on that. Oh, sorry, you poke it in the eye. The eye here. You poke it in the eye. And you get this. And then you can click on every one of these. And uh, I only have one image from the, the QC, uh, which is basically. Uh, Quality score on the left-hand side here, so the FRED score that uh, Michael talked about, up to 40, and uh, at the base position, so 1, 2, 3, up to and 75 base pairs. So that matches the fact, or 76, so we know we have 76 base pairs, and, uh, and that worked. 
So all of this we're doing right now, it's working well in the cloud. This works well, apart from loading the, the file to um, UPenn, it would have been a bit slower. Uh, it, it, it's a lot of, a lot of things. Uh, so one thing about this FastQ file, it's actually an older FastQ file than some of the new, newer programs. It's something to do with the, the bit score and then the range of, of numbers. And so in Galaxy, there's a program called Groomer, which allows you, and there's explanation of what Groomer does. On, on if you type Groom, for example, then FastQ Groomer, which is the program we're going to use. So you go type Groom here, you find all the programs. Click on this one, you get this page show up. It knows the FastQ file. It's in Sanger. So you got to change that to, sorry, input FastQ quality score type to Sanger. It's correct. And then you run the execute. And here you have instructions or, or documentation on, on uh, that. Click that. This one actually takes a while. We even have time to go get a glass of water. <laughs> takes a few minutes. So once you get this one started, you can ask questions so far, uh, talk to your neighbors. Yes? Yes? The tool shed. So there, so I'm not sure, is that, yeah, the question is, the version we have at OICR doesn't have everything. You know, when you go download everything, does it come with that? They're actually migrating to shipping an empty sh shell, basically. But I think we did it, what, two years ago now? And, and it had pretty much most of these tools in it, right? You had to get a few. How many tools did you have to get? It's a big install challenge, yeah. And we also have UCSC Genome Browser that it talks to. We also have a local version of that. So that's a bit of a headache, too. And we also have Ensemble. Huh? Yes. So it makes it easier to tell you, it, it, it's the source code to, to, to get all the things installed on your platform. Because you have, some of it you have to compile on your machine. So, so it works with, with the libraries and, and so forth that you have. So you need to, a system admin type person to, to help you put it together. Yeah. It's not quite an app store yet. But it's, relative, it's, it's well documented. It's, uh, and they're, like I mentioned before, the, uh, the, they realize that getting a, a, a user to install their own version is, is a plus plus, is a big plus for them, because it, it, they they're not using the UPenn one, which is getting saturated and so forth. Yeah, and you can deal, that's it. From a privacy issue point of view, it's, that's, why, that's why we did it, yes, yeah. So while you're doing this, one thing to go do and is to go look at um, at the Galaxy project page. Uh, Galaxy project dot org. And uh, you can uh, go subscribe to the mailing list. You can go see. So actually, search here. So this is a Google search engine, but it only looks at the Galaxy stuff. So if you're interested in, let's say, RNA seq, uh, it's 240 hits. Uh, published workflow. So it was a question, but he's gone uh, about RNA seq uh, workflows. So take step one: you do fast you groomer, top hat, map with bow tie, 
Matt BWA for Illumina, Flagstat, Cufflinks, Flagstat, and so forth. So that's a so you can import, you can save this workflow and use it on your own data, or or so forth. So there's also that's an example of of things available. Um, it's a different one, different person. It's good if some of these have actually are cited in papers and so um, and all sorts of notes and so forth. Um, so yesterday was what, like um, uh, BWA Alignment, yeah. So, there's a user question about BWA. Let's go back here. Oops, I just deleted the question. Let me start over. So this is, um, uh, yeah, so here, BWA. Demo, mapping, application, duplicate. Right. So AUN1, that's Anton. He's one of the developers, that, the PIs on the, on the uh, Galaxy projects. And so this is all the published workflow and with user rating and, and so forth. Um, and you can search for specific ones that, that have the tool of interest. Somebody yesterday mentioned ChipSeq. Uh, so we actually don't do any ChipSeq in any of the workshops, but obviously Galaxy does ChipSeq. So uh, there are workflows for that that are available there. RNA seek, RNA like, so forth. Lots, of, lots of information. So where I, where did I get this? So I went to share data, publish workflows. These are publicly available workflows. Uh, publish history. Some people have their history, uh, visualizations, and pages. Pages is a way of putting together a workflow, the data the analysis, the comments, and into a page, basically. It's like a publishable unit, almost. Although it's not that widely used yet. Uh, on, this is on, we're right now this page is on, uh, on usegalaxy.org, so it's at the University of Pennsylvania version. From there, you can launch a cloud cluster. And actually, if you have your Amazon account, it'll take you pretty straight up into uh, the way uh, to the last step almost. So you don't. You, there's a lot of steps that it skips, but you don't have the the pleasure of going through the agony of selecting all the variables and the type of instances and so forth. So who has a green box at this point? Okay, so I'd say that's uh, majority rules here. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
you poke it in the eye, and so you see the, uh, what kind of file is this? FASTQ file. So this is a groomed FASTQ file. Okay? So we're actually going to use Bowtie, which is another mapper. So you used BWE yesterday, so we're going to use Bowtie. This is actually Bowtie 1. It's the old Bowtie. And how did I, so if you type map on the search tool on the, on the left-hand side here, I type map. And it has a few um, mapping tools on the cloud. On University of um, Use Galaxy, it has more tools. But here it doesn't have, for example, BWA, which you guys used yesterday. So Bowtie is a different mapper, which uh, will, does work. And so we use actually, the thing you have to change is HD19 here. So we're going to map against HD19. And the FASTQ file we're going to use is the Groom FASTQ file from Chromium 22. This is the name I gave it, so I renamed that file Groom FASTQ. And uh, use everything as a default and hit execute. And this one's pretty fast. And, uh, and then poke it in the eye. And I have some header file from Sam. So this is a Sam file now, right? And then I have all the things that we talked about uh, yesterday. And then it actually tells you which chromosome we mapped on. So this is all the reads are from chromosome 22. But you'll see there's quite a few sort of chromosome 14 and other places that seem to, to map there as well. Why is that? Why is it that certain reads mapped in multiple places? Mostly repeats, mostly duplicated genes, mostly, there's all sorts of reasons. But it's biological. It could be the aligner as well. <laughs> it says the software developer there. <laughs> yeah, the aligner. So that's why there is ongoing benchmarking with. Uh, aligners, <coughs> SNP colors, and which aligner with which SNP color, you get different results. And then you, get, you have to do validation at the other end. And validation means resequencing, amplifying the DNA, and sequencing with either a different technology or the same technology so that you can sort of validate that that SNP is indeed SNP or variant. Because we're not calling it a SNP yet, because it's just because it's different than the reference genome, a variant. We don't even know if it's a somatic variant or any what kind of variant it is. It's just different. So this difference is it done by chance? Is it sequencing error? Is it uh, population error? Is it a sample prep? Is it a liner problem, and so forth? And there are ongoing benchmarking going on with uh, mappers and aligners and and uh, SNP colors to see which one is the best. And truth of the matter, unfortunately, is that we don't know. And depending on what kind of DNA you have, de depending on, on GC content, depending on how homogeneous the sample is, I um, mean, worst case is cancer, where you have different cellularity, you have different, each cell is, is, is an evolving mass, basically. And so there's a lot of challenges there. All of those things make it that things map at the wrong place sometimes. And so um, there's ways in IGV, we looked at it, and if we can see differences, they're sporadic. Some of them are, everybody's different from the reference, and so forth. We actually don't, and we have position coordinates here, but it's kind of hard to, to, actually it's not the best way to, to look at it. And so. We have an option actually to change the reference, or we just start with the one which Yes. So the one we picked, we actually picked the one, so basically the, whatever reference you're going to select or map against is the one you use, whatever is loaded on your computer. So on this computer, there is HD19, but they also have some plant finished genomes. They have other animals and so forth. So you need, you need a, a FASTA file that has most of the genes, mostly sequenced, although it could be partially sequenced. But most of them sequence, and then you're going to map against that 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 uh, 
And the way many of the aligners work is that they sort of break it into small words. They know where those words are in the genome. There's an index system. And then they sort of can do a quick lookup. Okay, it matches this word, so therefore it's over there. It matches that word, so it's over there. And so it needs this FASTA file to read with it. From that, it builds ind indices to go map across multiple places. And obviously, there's some which are the same at multiple places. So where it maps to in some software, it's totally random. It picks one over the other. Sometimes it picks the largest chromosome. Sometimes it picks the smallest chromosome. There's all sorts of, uh, huh? Some don't what? And some refuse to report it. And some appropriately report, you know, everywhere. So you get these pileups of things in certain places. So before we do anything else with this file, we're going to actually, since we know that we only have chromosome, we gave it chromosome 22 files, we're going to clean it up. And so uh, we're able to do that. So with, uh, we're going to do a filter on and sort. So we're going to filter, uh, sorry, filter, filter, no, this one here, yeah, filter. And you get this window show up. So it knows which file to get, which is the SAM bowtie map read from Cosmo 22. And we're going to do the following conditions. We're only going to take the file where column 3 is says chromosome 22. So this is a very much a standard way to select on a column in, in, uh, in Galaxy. So C3, column 3 equals equals chromosome 22 between single quotes, a string. So it matches that string of text. Sorry? It just, it when it oh, yeah, it said chromosome 1. Yeah. Or C, no, it said column 1. Yeah, so it doesn't know what it is. It doesn't know you're looking at a SAM file where column 3 is a chromosome 1. Uh, a bed file, actually, chromosome 1 would be in, the, in column 1. So this is a filter for any tool, for any flat file. And so now, after we do that, poke it in the eye, and everything's chromosome 22. So like yesterday, we're going to convert this into the SAM file, into BAM, because BAM is more compressed. It's, it's a lot of software prefer BAM because of uh, the small footprint, and it's easier to, compress, to work through, and so forth. And with the other adjoining file, which Galaxy knows about too, the index file, it is able to look things up faster, and so forth. So Galaxy knows about the index file. We'll keep track of it and it will use it when it's necessary. So I just type SAM on that tools, then I find SAM to BAM, click on that, and then I get this file, it's very locally cached, filter on, on data five, and it's the name of the file from the glass in the X2. And so I get the, uh, the BAM version of that chromosome. So I renamed it BAM chromosome 22 map reads. Now we actually have this new icon showing up here. And if you click on that, you get two things showing up. You get Trackster and Circster. Circster is a word that's taken off of which other tool does it look like? Circles. Circles, yeah, it's actually their version of Circos. I've actually never used it, and there's, um, we don't have data here, to, so we're not going to talk about Circos. Surfster, but we're going to use Trackster. So we're actually going to click on Trackster. So first you have to convert it to BAM. Yeah, you have to do this on the BAM file. Sorry if I'm going too fast here. You're one screen behind. So you have this file, so you have your SAM yeah. file. And then that's cleaned up. It only has chromosome 22. Yep. And then I click on, I search SAM, SAM to BAM. Yep. That's SAM to BAM. Execute. Yep. And now you, ca you can't poke it, in, you can poke it if you want, but basically it's a, it's a binary file, so it, doesn't, it won't be able to show you in the middle panel. So you can use a pencil to rename the file. 
you can save it to this weird looking square thing that's called a diskette. <laughs> Information, rerun the, the conversion, or click on here, which is Trackster. The first one, the first choice is Trackster. Could not have this data set browser. Oh, okay. So, this one? You get this one? This window here? You don't get this? Uh, did you use the groomed version? If you go back and make sure you use the groomed uh, uh, fast Q file. That may be a problem there. If you didn't groom it, it won't work. So grooming was all the way back here before mapping. You have to run fast Q groomer, and then you have uh, fast Q uh, groom. Then I think I. I renamed it Room Fast Cube Problem 22. Francis, we can match with the bow tie on the green file to help us suppress the header. I don't think I did that, no. Oh, you won't even mind. Uh, uh, room. No, I did not suppress the header. I uh, I would do it. I don't know. I haven't done it. I don't know. Produce the sound with several lines in the head. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. We're actually going to filter them out after. We filter them when we call them 22. So did anybody get the tractor to work? Yes? Okay. Huh? No data to display. Hmm. What you did? Um, okay, so click on your Sam, where it says Sam to Bam. Go back. Okay. And then one more screen. And then, yeah, so we clicked on there, and then you click on it just so you get more info. Don't click on the eye. Because you go back one, just click on the words. This one here? Well, I think they're just, they don't have that open yet. So we just click. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then right click on track. Yeah, and then click on trackster. Let me see if I can bring one up. Yeah. I had one, but it disappeared. <laughs> oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. You're all logged in, yeah. Uh, uh, 
Francis, it seems you have to register within Galaxy to access tracks. Yeah, so. What do you mean? Yeah. No, no, but I, I told everybody, no, everybody should be registered. I did do that at the beginning of the workshop. Everybody should be logged in. After I told them that they all had to? <laughs> if you're not logged in, yeah. No, you, you have to register. If you're not logged in, if you don't have, let me log out. Uh, so you log in. If you're not, if you've never logged in, you have to register, and then you put in your name, password, confirm password, and public name, and then you submit. I'm already registered, so I'm gonna just go back here and log in. So I'm just going to log in, <laughs> and it, then now I visualize Trackster view and new visualization. I'm going to name it uh, chromosome 22, create, and then you get a change here. This to chromosome 22, okay. and there. So this is the exome sequencing, if you recall. So it's only you only have reads where the exon are because exome sequencing is uh, is a technique by which you capture only certain parts of the genome. So it represents about only one percent of the genome, fifty megabases, a bit more than one percent. And so it it's um, so you get deep coverage where the genes are. So there's lots of this is a new tool at, at Galaxy. There's a documentation is in development, I would say, in um, loading tracks on the Amazon is not as easy and uh, as it is as loading on um, on UPenn. So it's you got this sort of dichotomy of challenges there. So if I want to get back. Uh, so I would save it, so you can save it here, this little funny looking square thing, you can save it, and so then it, it, it can just, it'll be a saved image, or a saved uh, view of the genome that you can uh, look at, and, uh, and it's only, yeah, remember to look at chromosome 22, M is a mitochondria, and all the other pieces. Um, so... I'm going to get back out. Uh, I guess I could sort of analyze data. Are you sure you want to leave? Yes, leave page. Um, so, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So you can also, if you had a, a current version, you can click on here for IGV view. Uh, there's um, display in UCSC main. So I'm gonna I tried that yesterday, it didn't work. So I'm gonna try it again. See if it works this time. Oh, we're in the right chromosome, that's good. Um, so, but it doesn't show me my reads. Oh uh, yeah, this one here, scale, chromosome 22, this one, there we go, oh yeah, bam, that's my, oh yeah, that's my data, cool, yeah, 
So, uh, ah, there we go. So you can control click here, and you can sort of show it differently. So it can do full. There we go. So now we're in. You gotta be careful. So we're in. Um, zoom in. Zoom out. There we go. That's a bit better. So, does anybody have a favorite gene on chromosome 22? Huh? TBX1? Uh, TBX1. Yeah. Sorry, couldn't locate TBX1. That's good. Oh, I found something. Twenty-two. It is twenty-two, right? Am I? Which, which link? Oh, okay. But I'm on twenty-two now. Yeah. Yeah. You just type C H R twenty-two with nothing else, and you should be able to get the whole a whole chromosome. Chromosome twenty-two. So what we're doing here is that it took our BAM file image, basically, where the coordinates of all the reads, and it projected it onto the UCSC genome browser. And so you have all the, the files, the things I talked about earlier today, about where the genes are, the SNPs, and so forth. So you have all of that here as well. So if you're looking for your favorite gene, so if you scroll down, you have all those various fields that you can select from. They're all available here. Okay. So let's be brave here. I'm going to try ensemble. I've never done this before. Okay. So let's see what happens. Uh, you've been directed to uh, to nearest mirror. U.S. East. Okay. Send me the chromosome six. That's not good. That's a bad sign. So I'm gonna. Change the location here. I'm just going to change all of that for 22. is not as useful. Regional compared oh, genome. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's 
find it. So, so I have still have a few things to cover in my lecture, so I'm going to go back to my lecture now. So that was Traxter. So you have to remember to pick 22. This is one view, columns in 22. So, uh, so we've done a workflow right now. So we've done, you know, uh, room the file, filter, and so forth. So you can... Um, you can extract the workflow, and um, it's called I called it BAM generation. And so you can actually have it, uh, and then you can actually, uh, if you click on here, you can get an edit button. So first, you're over here, and you're in your history, in the top right button, extract workflow. So you generate a workflow that you will save everything. As I showed you in the, in the lectures uh, for the uh, the SNPs, and then uh, you can select everything, and then you can sort of go, and then this is basically all the steps of the workflow. They're all the files are all linked together by uh, uh, connectors, and this is the overall show. The bottom right shows you where you are in sort of the Google Map. So if you can move this, if you want to go see what's to the right, you just Shift this over, this box over, and you can look at that. These things you can move them around, you can spread them out uh, for a different layout. To, and you can any one you click on, you can edit. And so, for example, if you want to rerun this against chromosome 21 file, then you can instead of you remember when we did the filter on uh, on chromosome 22, you can just change that to 21, and then you can run that file, then run the whole workflow against chromosome 21. And it becomes a one-click operation to do all the steps. And so then uh, by using this one workflow. Uh, last year, we did, uh, we had RNA-seq part of this workshop, believe it or not. We also had a half day of RNA-seq in this two days. And th this year, we separated it as a separate workshop earlier in the week. And at the end, so what we, I did last year is we had um, an RNA-seq workflow that uh, my postdoc, Emily Chotin, at, uh, prepared and so we worked through it in the lab and so what I did here just so to show you that it, it is doable is I included the workflow here so you can actually look at it and, and play with it and use it if you want and uh, this is the map where we are the workflow is quite a bit bigger than what's seen on this canvas and this is a uh, one layout, and this is the same thing, just a different layout, a bit more spread out. But it's, it's, a, it's a, ideally it's the, the same type of information. A lot of the tools on here are not on the cloud, though. So this is an example of yet another example where we want, if you want to run this tool, you have to go to either a one of the public servers that has these. So a public server that'd be specialized in RNA seq would probably have all of these tools. And there's a, quite a few of them that are like that. There are some that are more into evolutionary phylogenetic analysis, so that you have all the tools to do the phylogenetic analysis. So, and the, again, the UPenn has a lot of these tools, but sometimes a, 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 a workflow may take days to run at UPenn, uh, while it would take hours to run it on your own site. And so there's a whole range of things. Also, all of these workflows you can share or publish. And so you can share means that you can email to your friend. Here's a URL that you can look at it. Or you can publish it and so that the whole world can, can look at it. Um, there's uh, lots of tutorials. Galaxy 101 is a, is a good one. Um, and then in the end, I want to just tell you about another project um, which actually uses uh, Galaxy and other tools. And it's basically Genome Space is another free resource from the Broad Institute that integrates a number of these tools. So it integrates Array Express, Cytotrome, Cytoscape, Galaxy, Gene Pattern, Genomica, Workbench, GI Tools, IGV. IGV is from the Broad, so is Gene Pattern, 
so is uh, Genome Space, and a, a few databases, and UCSC Genome Browser. And basically, it's a space that allows that the output of one program can become the input of the other program. And this Genome Space ensures that all the, the tools can talk to each other, so you don't have to worry about that. And unbeknownst to the user, well, you should know, but that's because that's why I'm telling you, is that all of this data in genome space is actually back-ended onto Amazon. Okay? So it actually goes into Amazon, stores in Amazon, and it's free because they have a grant from Amazon. It's free today. <laughs> I'm not sure how long it's going to be free, but right now it's free. Uh, but it's totally transparent to you because you don't even know, you don't log into Amazon or anything. You just you load to genome space. You have to register in genome space. So it's secure within genome space, but in the same way you can share and so forth in genome space. But uh, it's not, um, uh, it's, it's, it is Amazon. So as Michelle mentioned, it's very important to do the survey. It's really critical to do the survey. This is a We've done this workshop before, but it's the first time we're doing it in this format with the, these four or five modules. And so, we're, and the why we're doing it this way is because we had uh, recommendations from people last year to, to change the way we do it. So we take the feedback very, very seriously. We actually have a meeting in the fall where all the faculty from all the workshops get together and we plan next year's uh, delivery and so forth. And, we look at and, and comment and, and, and debate all, all the comments from people from all the workshops. Um, there's lots of Galaxy videos, screencasts, and uh, obviously invite you to, uh, to, to look and play with your own data and register and try out Genome Space. It's free for now. Um, so galaxy.org and use galaxy.org cloud, the Twitter feed, Accounts, Galaxy Projects, the tag if you're using Galaxy or looking for things, people that are referring to Galaxy is use Galaxy. There's a user's mailing list. There's a developer's one as well. Biostar was mentioned a few times. It's very, and it, it's biostars.org. Biostar.org is it something else, shoppers of some kind. Um, and on Twitter, there are Biostar questions. Um, Open Helix, I didn't talk about, but it's a, uh, Actually, it's a, uh, it's a commercial uh, venue that does help, su help uh, documentation and su support and training for bioinformatics. And UCSC and Galaxy actually paid OpenELIX. So a lot of stuff that they have about Galaxy and about uh, UCSC is free of charge. Some of the other things are not free of charge. Basically, they sell uh, support for, for other products. UCSC, uh, and also the, um, the owner or one of the senior people at, um, at uh, Open Linux has a great blog with lots of very useful things. UCSC has their own space, their own Twitter, uh, some more tutorials. Sea Cancer is another one for more for NGS 